Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, welcome, Administrator. Last fall, EPA Administrator McCarthy met with our Governor, Steve Bashir, uh, to discuss the proposed rule. And after that meeting, Kentucky sent a framework to EPA with recommendations on ways to develop a rule that would reduce carbon pollution cost effectively while offering our state the flexibility in, in meeting the new standards. My understanding is that EPA followed m almost all of uh, the Commonwealth's recommendations. Is that correct? Um, I, I, I believe so, uh, Congressman. I, I, Thank you. And those included, uh, again, allowing states to reduce emissions uh, flexibly using measures such as energy efficiency, renewable energy, and fuel switching to natural gas, yep. rather than forcing states to reduce emissions in any specific plant. Also recognizing differences among states' resource potential, current generation portfolios, and allowing a variety of compliance options, including energy efficiency and so forth, as you said. Mm -hmm. But here's another example of how that flexibility can help. The uh, American Recovery and Reinvestment Act established a rebate program to help spur development and adoption of energy efficient appliances <clears throat> to replace older, less efficient appliances. Uh, General Electric has a major manufacturing facility in my district, and because of that program, they were able to bring a manufacturing line of refrigerators from Mexico back to Louisville and creating hundreds of jobs in, uh, in the process. Does the proposed rule allow states to take credit for reductions achieved through energy efficient initiatives like this one? Um, certainly, uh, any program that, that um, uh, encourages or incentivizes or provides for um, ways for, for people to save energy, which means less carbon going up the stack, um, are, are completely uh, creditable under the plan. Great. Well, we're happy that EPA agrees with that. That's a, a good example of, of how to create flexibility and also create energy efficiency and help consumers save money and, and reduce uh, emissions. You know, I'm glad the chairman mentioned uh, Waxman-Markey earlier in, in his opening remarks because I was one of a group of 10 or 12 or so uh, representatives from states that were heavily dependent on carbon, on coal-based uh, energy, who went to our leadership at the time. Rick Boucher from Virginia led that effort, and, and we basically said to our leadership and to Mr. Waxman that uh, we couldn't support the bill as it, as it was originally drafted, that it would have been devastating for our uh, consumers and our businesses, and they made changes in that bill. And before I voted for that bill, uh, I talked to all of the major consumers of energy in my district, electric being one. Ford Motor Company has two major f manufacturing facilities, uh, the University of Louisville, the uh, Jefferson County Public School System, Louisville Metro Government, UPS, we're the global hub of UPS. And not one of those users of electricity objected to that that law, proposed law, and said they were either for it or neutral on it, saying we could live with it. Uh, I talked to our utility company and asked what the impact of that law would be on uh, the residential customers. And they said, we think that after 10 years, the average residential user have, will have their rates go up 15% if they do nothing else. They don't adjust their thermostat, they don't change light bulbs, they don't insulate, so forth. So if they were paying $200 a month at the beginning of the period, 10 years from now, they would be paying 230 a month. So I felt pretty comfortable that I could vote on that, and knowing that uh, there would be minimal negative impact on my, uh, my constituents. So I'm glad that the, the chairman re compared what the EPA rule does now to that law back then. And I, I, I want proposed law back then, which Republicans in the, in the Senate killed. But I want to get to this whole scare tactic of manufacturing businesses being uh, affected and, and moving out of states and so forth, because, again, I haven't heard from any of my major manufacturers, and I have a lot of them in my district. Uh, they're not afraid of this proposed rule. So my question is to you, assuming that, you know, it's not easy to move a manufacturing company. Ford has it almost a couple billion dollars invested in my district in their two plants. So they just can't pick up and leave, even if the energy went up. But you've made an estimate of how, what the increase potential rates would be, um, even in the short term on this. I think it was about 3 percent. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, so it seems hard to, to uh, logically predict that a 3 percent rise in a manufacturing company's rates would be enough of a financial disincentive to force them 
to pick up a, a major investment and move somewhere else. Is that part of the calculation that you did when you were creating this rule? Uh, well, energy efficiency is good for everybody and, and, and good for business. I, I, I think we, we all know that. Um, and uh, as you say, the increases in electricity prices we see are, are modest um, in the short term and then go down over the long term. Um, so okay. so I, I think businesses will take that into account. Great. Thank you. I yield back. This time I recognize the gentleman from